Let us prepare our hearts for worship. The Lord said to Jeremiah, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans that you may have a hope and a future. Let us bow in prayer. Lord, you are creator, the source of all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lord, it is you who gave us life, and you are in control of all life, no matter what the circumstances may be. For you have promised that you will never leave us nor forsake us. You have left your spirit for us, O Lord, to strengthen us, to teach us, to guide us, and to show us your way. Be with us now, O Lord, and may all that we do and say glorify your name. To Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. I read to you today from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat me up, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I read to you again from Philippians chapter 3 and verses 12 to 14. St. Paul writes, Not that I have already attained this, that is, I have not already been perfected, but I strive to lay hold of that which Christ Jesus also laid hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have attained this. Instead, I am single-minded, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching out for the things that are ahead. With this goal in mind, I strive toward the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God read to us. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Let us pray. Speak to us by your spirit, O God. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength, our Savior, and our Redeemer. Amen. The world as we knew it nine months ago is no more, and it will never be the same again. The coronavirus pandemic has changed the world forever. Who would have ever thought that to go into a bank and ask for money that you would have to put on a mask? Today, the first official day of school, who would have thought that no students would be in school? Today is unprecedented in the history of education in our country. But while there are many, many challenges to be faced in dealing with this new normal, there are also going to be new and creative opportunities. What will make the difference is our attitude to the challenges we will face. Remember, success does not depend on our aptitude, but on our attitude. Your future is not going to be a test of your academic ability, but a test of your character. While there were many challenges this year, the Apostle Paul reminds us in Romans 5 and verses 3 to 4, more than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. So see today, my dear friends, as the first day of the rest of your life,
have confidence in yourselves and have faith in God. It is a new beginning. What a new beginning does is it gives us the opportunity to make a fresh start, to set new goals. It gives us the opportunity to learn from past mistakes and challenges and take what may have been stumbling blocks and turn them into stepping stones that would launch us into a wonderful future that is just waiting for us to grasp it. In Philippians chapter 3 and verses 13 to 14, the Apostle Paul gives this advice. Forgetting what is behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. That advice from God's word has stood the test of time. I don't know of any more relevant and practical advice as you prepare for your new school term under the circumstances in which our country finds itself. None of us can change the past, but all of us can change our future if we believe in ourselves and put our trust in God. Some of us who may feel that in some ways we have not achieved our fullest potential and our own expectations of ourselves because of the limitations placed on us because of COVID-19. What God's word is saying to us today is that we must not allow ourselves to be bogged down by our past challenges, that we must not dwell on our past to the extent that it paralyzes us and keeps us from moving forward into the future that God has planned for us. Over the next few months, maybe even the next few years, is a good time for you to rise to that challenge. To say to yourself, we are going to, with the help of God, forget our past. We are going to stop torturing ourselves about, about what we didn't achieve so far. This new beginning is a good time to stop being chained to our past challenges. God is saying here in his word that he doesn't want us to go through our lives living in the past. So as we stand today at the first day of the rest of our lives, let us move with the conviction to forget what is behind and strain forward to what lies ahead. My dear brothers and sisters, many have faced challenges in the past. And many overcame those challenges because they never fell down and stayed down. They always got up. And in spite of all the challenges you face, you too will get up. You will rise. Have faith in God. Remember what God said to Jeremiah. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Instead, Paul says, I am single-minded, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching out for the things that are ahead. With this goal in mind, I strive toward the prize. And as you strive towards the prize, which you are all able to achieve, remember this, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. We give you praise, O God. For everything that is new and beautiful, for everything which holds promise and brings us joy, we ask you, dear Lord, to bless all our students, our teachers, our parents, and all those who contribute to our children's well-being as we start this new school year. Lord, we know it is different to what we have experienced in the past. But we believe in your promise that you will not leave us nor forsake us. As they journey, O oh Lord, through the school year, through online classes, 
Father, be with them. Give them that strength. Give them that courage. Give them that determination. Help them to make the most of every opportunity they have to start afresh. May they, O oh Lord, continue to strive forward, forgetting the past. May the new beginning of this school year remind them that you give chances to start over and over again. Lord, let your spirit be upon them. Help them to learn and to work together. Help them to listen when they should and to know the best words to utter when they speak. So that, Lord, in all that they do, they will become all that you created them to become. Father, bless their homes, bless their families, bless the teachers of this school, bless the principal, bless every member of staff, O oh God, and the ancillary staff and the security guards, who, O oh Lord, do whatever they do for their blessing, so that these students may become the best that they can be. And then we say this prayer, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May he make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May he lift up his countenance upon us and grant us his peace, both now and forevermore. Amen.